ጉዳይ ቻላች ተካታዮች ከዚህ ቀጥሮ የምንናቀርብላችሁ ምርታዊ ቪዲዮ የነብይ ማርዮን ታሪክ የሚያሳይ ሲሆን ነብይ ማርዮ በዚህ ግራሚ አዋርድ ባገኘ ትምርታዊ ቪዲዮ ላይ 19 ዓመተ ምህረት ሲሆን ነብይ ማርዮ በዚህ ግራሚ አዋርድ ባገኘ ትምርታዊ ቪዲዮ አቾ ላይ 1972 ከ50 ዓመት አካባቢ እንዴት አድርገው የዌስተርን ኑራ ዓለም አሁን ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ ጌታ ይናገራናል ጌታ ሹክደናል ይላሉ ሰዎች እንደሚያታሉ ሰዎች እንደሚያታሉበት እንሰሰም እንዴት ይተቀቡበት እንደነበርና በመጨረሻ ግን ይሄ ውሸትና የማታለል ሰልችሯቸው እንዲሁም ደግሞ በህዝብ ላይ የሚያደርሱት ጥፋት እና በብዙ ሰዎችን ህይወት ገንዘብ ማ እንትምትቷቸው ራሳቸው በድርቀ ያወጣው እንዳጋለጡትና በፊልም ተሰርቶ በሆሊውድ ደረጃ የግራሚ አዋርድ ኖሚኔት ከመሆኑ ይدرس ፊልም ነው ባሁን ሰዓት እንዲ አይነት ኢንፎርሜሽኖችና መረጃዎች በኢንተርኔት ላይ ያሉ ክራውድ ሳይኮሎጂ ፕላሲቦ ኢፌክት ሂፕኖዛይዝን እየተቀቡ ህዝብ የሚያታሉ ሰዎች ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ ባለመጣውቃቸው ምክንያት ጌታ ተናገረ ይያሉ ዶክተሮች ፕሮፌሰሮች የተራደቡ ሰዎችን ሲያታሉ ማየት በጣም የሚያዝን ሆኖ ስለአገኘ ነው ይህን መረጃ በዚህ አይነት መልክ ህዝብን ያስተብራል ብለን ተላምንበት ለቀዳዋል ተመርከቱት አቃለት this is a business and you know you don't you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick or as the, the evangelists say it's a it's a, a ministry like the, it's incredible they'll say oh brother so and so he's got the ministry of laying on of hands or he's got the ministry of prophecy but that's a gimmick and the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings and do good oh, well, glory. Oh, hallelujah since i lay decision to make. And I said, "Yes, Lord, I will." Thank you, loving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I dedicated my Amen. life to God. Praise the Lord. Glory. That night when she went home, that cancer had dissolved and run completely down her face. She was healed by the power of God. And the only thing that was left was a little irritation mark of little pink skin, but the skin was new like a baby. Hallelujah. Only because she believed. Hallelujah. When I would go to a pastor's church where I hadn't preached before and they'd sort of look me over and wonder, you know, what was I really going to say? What was I really like? And I'd sort of have to just cool it till I got up on the platform and they saw that I did say all the, the things they wanted to hear. Would some of you get out $5 or $10? Bring what you would for Jesus tonight. Come on. <laughs> I can't really think of a time that I ever believed in God or in, you know, and I've ever thought that it was a miracle of God that I preached. I don't think even with all the people uh, gathering around me, you know, thousands of people saying this has to be a miracle, surely, you know, God has called you and all that. I don't think with all that I just, you know, knew that I could do it well and my parents had trained me, but I never really tripped out and thought that I was some uh, real miracle child of any kind. I think nowadays people have seen so much and see so much happen they can they can tell one of these shysters when they come through because oh, they've heard everything you know, know they'll listen a couple nights and they won't say anything you know but they can tell after a while yeah they're not dumb you know people are intelligent nowadays they right there's, there's one guy that gets into it so heavy that he's into he prophesies and he told me how he did it. he sat right I mean he looked right across the table back and forth at me and and he told me how you know how he confiscates money he says he's on this station is over 40 states and uh he'll go on there and he'll be, get on the radio and he'll say I know that listening to my little voice tonight that there's some lady out there and you've got ten dollars put away in a cookie jar now God spoke to my heart and told me to go and tell you to get that ten dollars and get it in the mail and send it to me and God will bless you God will give you a reward such as you have never known before and then he comes back to me and he tells me he says if you're on the radio and you're going over 40 states and you're on at prime time you've got thousands of people listening the chances are that there are at least two or three hundred little old ladies who've got a ten dollar bill in a cookie jar and so if you even get you know if a couple hundred go over and get it and send it to you that's two grand that you've made just like that and so you know if you're going to get into big time religion this is the games you've got to play things like that it's a it's a you go into it as a business and you work it 
as a business, you know. As they make their way up into the upper room, oh, hallelujah, they shut the windows, they lock the doors for fear of their lives. But I see them as they got down on their knees and they began to pray. And I see the Holy Ghost as cloven tongues of fire were upon them, hallelujah. And oh, my, the Holy Ghost finally found a permanent resting place. What you want God to do for you? He's going to do it right now. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Praise Him. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Him tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so real tonight already saved but they're getting the baptism and someone will be standing there going and you know and the poor person will be standing there and they're not saying anything then after a while about four or five more will gather around and they'll start doing the same thing you know come on speak it out speak it out till all of a sudden the person will you know get so overwhelmed by the thing that they start going you know and the next thing you know, oh, that's it you've got it like they feel good we got another one you know tremendous tremendous he's a born preacher he's a he's a he's of life, just a preaching machine, but it's an miracle of God, he's, and of God the body, no question. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Well, praise him. I've watched certain rock performers perform, and a lot of things I do, you know, I've copied off of them or, or gotten in, you know, like Mick Jagger, certain things that I do, I, I sort of do like a waist hunching thing that he does sometimes. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. We gotta watch out for these professional shouters. Can you say amen? Some people, I'll tell you, the minute the music starts, anyone that's in the spirit, you better watch out. Because they gotta do the boogaloo or they gotta do the front. They got their own little thing. That's not the spirit, man. That's carnal. Come on. Hallelujah. You're not liking this, but I'm telling you the truth and you know it. I mean, if I was going to pick a religion uh, of, of you know Christian type religion that I had to go into one of them I mean thank God I don't have to but if I had to go into one of them I would you know pick the Pentecostal faith because some of the churches the music is just great and uh, the people are interesting you know they're kind of weird uh, and it's okay you know it's on every head bowed and every eye closed hallelujah I just want to see the hands tonight. Did you play that song, He Touched Me? I can't get up and say to them, okay, now listen, if you just believe this afternoon, I mean, it's all got to be done under the thing of uh, Jesus, and uh, which even that's okay. Like, you know, the Jesus thing I would leave, but they still, I've got to put in that thing, like, if you don't come down, you're going to go to hell, and you're going to burn, and you've got to go into the sin thing. It's the the way that I have to do it, if I could just do like the faith number and get up and say, okay, you know, everybody, let's really get loose this afternoon and get off and get rid of all of our hangups and have nice group therapy, that would be great, but you can't do it that way. I've got to, it's got to all be done under this facade of holiness. For something, something happened, it's going to happen. Are they white as snow? Thank you, Jesus. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is so good to me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise the Lord. It's going in and out of the two lives. It's, you know, I just don't want to do it anymore. What can I say? Sometimes I feel like I should get up and do repentance to the audience or something you know which like I have these fantasies a lot of times you go through like I'd really like to get up and uh, just tell them what I really think or where you know where I'm really at or what I'd like them to do then when I get up you know I go right into my sermon but things like this relieve my head at the time but I've been playing with that now for a couple of years and I just can't go on doing it like that anymore hallelujah, hallelujah.
once that you get one or two that really come off and say, yeah, I really felt it. You know, I had a bad back, I had a bad leg. Then there's a host of say, oh, yeah, I feel better, too, because like 90% of it is psychosomatic. I feel better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God is going to do something for you. Then I'll turn around to the crowd and I'll say to everyone, Do you believe it? And you know, everyone say yes, you know. I said, That's not enough, but there's no faith here tonight. I can't do anything. You've got to believe it. And I'll go, Do you believe it? And then by this time, the crowds go, Yes. And I'll say, Sister, as I lay my hands on you, it's going to happen. By this time, you're just like this, you know, because <laughs> I do a whole thing on you. Then, you know, I sort of like get down to now I'm going to pray the prayer and everyone bow your heads. And all of a sudden, they go, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and by this time, the shock doesn't get you. you know? Thank you for the little children, Jesus. Hallelujah, sister, the joy of the Lord's all over you tonight. Why don't you praise him? Say, thank you, Jesus. I believe he's going to touch you right now. Say thank you, Jesus. Sister, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Honorable Satri Hasia. Glory to Jesus. Sometimes people hold a core belief that is very strong. When they are presented with evidence that works against that belief, the new evidence cannot be accepted. It would create a feeling that is extremely uncomfortable called cognitive dissonance. And because it is so important to protect the core belief, they will rationalize, ignore and even deny anything that doesn't fit in with the core belief. Mark Twain, it's easier to fool people than to convince them they have been fooled. Why? Because they don't understandably want to realize they've been fooled. But it's a wonderful thing to realize you've been fooled. It's a great gift because from that point you will not be fooled any longer. It's a wonderful gift. Abundance is yours. Claim it today. Subscribe for more great videos.